All right, guys, how's it going? It's JC again. Uh, so I said I was going to do a review on my Suzuki. Uh, this is a 2006 Suzuki Vincent 500. Um, what can I say about this thing? Uh, this bad boy is really tough, uh, really durable. This is the uh, manual foot shift tran uh, transmission, not the CVT, CVT equipped one which uh, I prefer the manual shift in this, these models than the CBT ones. Seems to be a whole lot more reliable than the other one I used to have. I've had a lot of issues with the belts on the old one. Um, all I can say is, mainly, is this thing is durable. I mean, you, is, Suzuki was one of the first to make four-wheel ATVs. I think they were the first. Um, I know when they made this model here, they had been asleep for quite a while, but they finally came out with them. And uh, the, the main thing that I would say if you plan on getting one of these is um, it's not going to be the smoothest riding machine, all right? <laughs> Unless you want to replace the shocks or, you know, get better tires and all that. But as far as rugged and tough and pretty powerful, I think when they when they first made these, uh, 500 cc's they were the most powerful 500 cc in their class this one comes in at 493 cc's uh, carbureted obviously and um you get a pretty good bit i mean uh, one of the things i've always liked about them is uh you know you got the the watertight storage here which i thought was pretty cool um great gauge pod uh, it's got i mean i think when they first made them they didn't have um uh, a gas gauge on them, but uh, in the later years when they made these They actually uh, put a gas gauge Inside here. I think some of the older ones had a gas gauge like right in this area somewhere But uh, they actually put it in there. You see mine's only got 2,500 miles on it um, You got your tripometers a and B you got your clock. I think you got an hour meter on there speedometer uh, You got your lighted gauge or lighted position up here um, If you get the foot shift one um it actually, here, I'll come around the other side. Well, like I said, I, guys, I prefer this model when it comes to the Suzuki. Um, it actually has the foot shift, which is like everyone, you know, it's got the, uh, the automatic clutch, five speed. And then you got the high and low adjuster here, which, you know, in the automatic CVT transmission, you have a high and low range as well, which is pretty cool. So I actually like that because this thing, you know, it, it can pull pretty well. So, uh, another thing too, you know, when it, you know, like my, my Kodiak, I showed you guys, um, this is a non IRS machine, but it does have two preload set adjustable shocks in the rear with a straight axle, single disc brake in the rear. And one of the things about a straight axle is obviously if you load anything onto it, like if you're doing yard work or you're pulling a trailer or whatever, moving your boat around, which these things are pretty strong to move, you know, a medium sized smaller boat, then it's not going to squat. You know, like if obviously if you sit on this, it's going to squat. But if you put a trailer on that, it's not going to squat. So as long as it was in the range of pulling for this thing, I think this thing here pulls like 980 pounds, something like that, which ain't too bad for a 500. But it's not going to squat like a, a, a CB, uh, IRS machine is going to because you know the, the weight pushes down on the suspension instead of just the axle on this um, Another cool thing with the older ones is a lot of the newer ones aren't doing it anymore, but this still has a pull start on it, which is nice so I think a lot of the newer ones when I was uh, Buying my newer one that they don't have that anymore, which is pretty cool and uh, that's always nice to have because a lot of these older ones and I've had it with issues with Yamahas and Kawasaki's too. Um, that starter relay that's underneath the seat can go bad on you. And uh, it'll just make a clicking noise. You know, anytime they get wet or whatever. This little bad boy right here. It's my battery tender, I always put those on my, my bikes. But uh, I always keep mine covered in dielectric grease. And, um, you know, I don't buy the cheap one either. I'll usually go with the actual manufacturer one because they last a whole lot longer and uh, a little bit more expensive, but man, they last a whole lot longer. The other ones are like 15 bucks off of eBay and they break very, very easy. But um, another cool thing about this is compared to a lot of the newer ones, this thing has over a five gallon tank on it. I mean, you know, 
So I think a lot of them are now, they don't even go that high. But this one here has got five gallon tank on it, which is pretty cool. Um, so if you're thinking about getting one of these, um, hang on a second, put the seat back on. Uh, it's a great machine, really tough, really durable. The only thing I would say is just make sure you do your maintenance on it like I've done mine. I've had it for a long time and, uh, I mean, you see it, it still looks really good. And I've been covered in mud and every damn thing else. Um, one thing I would say is just make sure you do your maintenance, make sure you lube all your points. And, uh, you know, always keep a check on your, uh, your axle boots because I had trouble with one of them. I had to fix that. Had a hole punctured in it. Um, not the best front end. And it don't have a metal bumper or whatever. So, you know, you got to be careful what you do run over. Um, it's pretty durable. There is metal behind it, obviously. It's just a durable plastic on the front. Um, uh, they do make a lot of aftermarket metal front bumpers that go on them if you really want to get that for, like, pushing over shit and stuff like that. But I don't really r try to run over anything too crazy with this bad boy. But, uh, you know... Um, Great workhorse though, really sporty, it's got plenty of power. Uh, you know, with a, a single axle rear end like that or solid axle, it's gonna be able, you know, be able to slide the ass in round really good. You know, um, I think when we had our uh, Honda Rancher, um, you know, the Honda Rancher was fuel injected and it's like 421 cc's. And uh, this thing right here just left it in the dust. <laughs> so Honda's durable, not the fastest in the world, but this Suzuki's pretty damn quick. So uh, any questions, any comments, feel free to ask. Uh, this one is actually for sale, so I'm actually going to be getting rid of it. So, But uh, I think we're going to get another uh, Yamaha Kodiak 40, 450, I think it is. But um, yeah, guys, any questions, go ahead and ask. Thanks.